Normally when my good friend Kyle reaches out and says, I have a video idea for you, it doesn't disappoint and today is no exception. So what we're going to look at today is a super simple JavaScript library that's extremely lightweight that will enable you to add scroll animations to any site as long as it supports attributes on your elements. So this is something that exists in Generate Blocks Pro, which is what we're gonna look at today. If you use something like Bricks or Oxygen, you're going to be able to do it, and I'm sure there are others that allow you access to your attributes. So the library we're going to take a look at is called Sal, or Simple Scroll Animation Library.js. And what I'm going to do is show you a demo of it, how to add it to your site, and it's, I promise, very, very easy, so it's not gonna take us long. Okay, so here I have a demo site that has a couple of animations ready to go, and if I go ahead and refresh, you're gonna see a couple of things happen. So this header is going to fade in, then I tried to label these buttons so you can see this zoom in effect is what's gonna happen on the button, a flip button, and then there's a little bit more down the page I'll show you in a second. So let's go ahead and refresh. You can see there's a nice fade in effect and I can control the duration and the delay and kind of the timing functions of all of these different aspects on the page, which I'll get to in just a little bit. Again, just to refresh one more time, maybe take a look at the buttons this time if you're focused on the hero. You can see you got a little flip left button and then a zoom in effect. And then if I scroll down just a little bit, you can see I have my left box come in from the left and my right box come in from the right and there's one more. So if we look at these, you can see they stagger in with a little delay effect and these are all super simple to achieve, built right in. And you can create any combination of these that you want. So any kind of timing function, any kind of effect, any sort of delay. So all I've done here to achieve this sort of repeating effect is set no delay on my first box, something like 200 milliseconds on my second, and something like 400 milliseconds on my third. So they kind of stagger in one after the other. Now this article came to my attention from George Mintropapas, and he is describing how to integrate this library into Generate Blocks Pro. He talks about going to GitHub and downloading some files, uploading to your site, and queuing, that kind of thing. In my case, I'm not gonna do that because there's a far more simple way to do it with WP Codebox. So if you watched my previous video on the WP Codebox stream, you should definitely check it out. It's a great plugin. If you don't already have it, it's in the description below. Now the thing is with this, we can shave off a lot of the extra work here to download files, upload them, and queue them, all that kind of thing. But George was really the inspiration for this video, so I wanna give a shout out to him. The link to this article is in the description, and there's also some other Generate Press tips and tricks on this site, so definitely check out his site. Now, real quick, before we get started, what I wanna do is just quickly share that this is a Generate Blocks Pro website, as they already mentioned, because we need access to our data attributes. The site is also running on Generate Press, and this is a one gigabyte Vulture server, so this is not a beefy site, and you can see how fast everything still functions. At the end of this video, what I'm going to do is a page speed scan, so we can take a look at the animations on and off and see what sort of performance impact it has on the site. But for now, what I wanna do is go ahead and jump into the library and give you an idea of how this is going to work. So all of these links you can find at the description below, and what we're going to do is go to this sal.js GitHub. So I'll go ahead and just click on this little button here, and we're gonna pull some code out of this instead of downloading it. So if I click on this little dist folder here, what you'll find inside of it is the CSS and the JS that we're going to need. So again, we're gonna use WP Codebox to add these to our site really, really easily. So what I'm going to do is just in new tabs, open up the CSS and the JS, and the first one is the CSS. I'm gonna go ahead and click this little copy to clipboard. And in WP Codebox, I'm gonna to go to new snippet, and we'll give this snippet a name. We'll just call this Sal CSS. We're gonna change the type to CSS, and I'm just gonna leave these settings alone we can go ahead and just paste in the CSS. And one thing I like to do is click on the little format code button, it makes it a little bit more readable. Yes, it's on you know tons of lines now, but you can actually see what's happening here as opposed to it all being on one line. So I need to go ahead and save and turn this on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create another snippet. So this one we'll call sal.js. Now the type here we're gonna change to JavaScript and we'll come back to some of these other options on the left side in just a moment. So go back over to the JS portion now and we're gonna copy this code. Then we're gonna take this in WP code box, pop that in, and again, I'm gonna to go to format code. We can save this and turn it on, but at this point, it's still not quite gonna work on the front end. There's a couple more settings we have to change here. So the first thing we need to do is change this JS to render in an external file, and then we also need to give this script tag an option here. So I've tested with both defer and async, and it works. So in terms of worst case scenario for performance, we're gonna go with async, and we're gonna keep our script location in the header. 
script location in the footer does work. Although I imagine if you have some more aggressive caching and that kind of thing, it could possibly make it so your animations don't load but that's just something you're gonna to have to test on your specific site. So again, we're just gonna go ahead and save this, make sure our options are good to go here. The other thing I wanna point out in WP Codebox is that you can set the snippet to run in a specific location. So if we choose the custom option here, we can actually build a condition that will apply this code only where it needs to show up. So in terms of adding these animations, you might only do it, let's say on your homepage and maybe like an about us page, but on your contact and maybe like some of your inner pages, you don't want those. So you can use these conditions to apply that code only where it should exist. Now, the other thing I wanna do real quick is just discard this condition. In my case, I'm fine with it appearing all over the front of the site because this whole library is like three and a half kilobytes. It's really, really small. So what I'm going to do is actually change this where to run snippet to only on the front end. And the reason why is because if we set it to everywhere, the JavaScript won't actually run in the Gutenberg editor, but the CSS will apply. So when you add those attributes to your elements, they'll suddenly disappear and kind of shoot off the page. So just to recap real quick, set your JS to external file. One of the script tag options, async is fine. Script location of header, snippet order of 10, and then where to run is front end. So we'll go ahead and save this. Then there's one more piece to this JavaScript that we need. So George was kind enough to provide another piece of code here, which initializes the JavaScript. So this single line right here is what's actually gonna make that JavaScript function on the front end. And then he also shared with us the ability to disable the animations below your 768 breakpoint. So if you want that, you could copy this whole code snippet. In my case, I'm okay with the animations working on mobile, but I'm going to just simply copy this first line here. And we need to go back to WP Codebox, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the JS and just add that little bit as a new line. So we will save this. And now when I go look at this on the front end, everything is still going to work as you can see. So I haven't actually showed you how to add these data attributes yet. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. So I'm gonna close out some of these tabs since we don't need them. And here in this GitHub link, what I'm going to do is click on Sal. We're gonna scroll down just a little bit until we find this table of contents. And I'm gonna click on animations. So this is the bulk of how you're going to customize the animations here. There's three primary things that you can use. So you can change the duration, the delay, and the easing function. And then you also have the type of animation that it is. So if we go ahead and load up our homepage, if we edit this page, what I'm going to do is simply select the container that I want to apply a condition to. And in fact, as you can see, the nothing here is appearing properly on the back end, and that's because I changed the JS, but I forgot to change the CSS to only apply on the front end. So I'm gonna make that change and save this. Then we will simply refresh our homepage and everything is back. So make sure you apply that code just to the front end. So now what I'm going to do is simply select my container, and then I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the advanced tab. Now in this case, the custom attributes will start off with nothing, so I need to add as many attributes as I need. But what we're going to do is simply type in data hyphen sal, and then we choose the animation type. So in my case here, I chose fade. And again, we can reference this list of the animation types. So fade, slide, zoom, and flip, and then all the different directions of those. So data hyphen sal, and then one of your animations is gonna be your first attribute. Then after that, you're going to choose the other options here. So I have data sal duration, and I have this set to 1500 for 1500 milliseconds, and that's how long the animation is actually going to last. You can see that the duration has a limit of two seconds or 2000 milliseconds. Next up, I have the delay option, so five milliseconds up to 1000. And in this case, I don't actually use a delay. I'll show you in just a second where we can use that. And then we lastly have the easing option. So this is how it should kind of fade in and what it should behave like. If you take a look here at this easing option, we click on this easings.net. These are all the different easing curves that you can use. So you might choose ease in out cubic to get something to show up right away. Or maybe if you want it to fade in a little bit slower, you can kind of see a visual representation of how these are going to fade in and out. Then there's some other cool ones down here. So you could kind of have like a little bounce effect with the elastic in and out, the ease bounce, ease out bounce. You know, there's all these different options. So you can kind of play with these easing functions. So again, I have data style of fade, data style duration of 1500 and ease out court in my case. Then on my buttons, what I've done here is essentially the exact same thing. So for my custom attributes, I have data style of zoom in, data style duration of 1200, a delay of 200 milliseconds, so the animation doesn't start right as soon as it enters the viewport. It waits, you know, basically two tenths of a second. 
and then again the easing function of ease out court. So then if we scroll down to these three boxes, this is where I added the delay. So the second box here is very similar, slide up, duration of 600, and delay of 200. So that's gonna wait 200 milliseconds before starting the animation on this box. And then on the third one, I changed the delay to 400. So it kind of staggered it out a little bit. So you can mix and match any combination of these attributes that you want. So what I wanna do now is on this last box, just show you what it's gonna look like and how we can go ahead and build our animation. So we're gonna scroll all the way down until we find the advanced tab. And we're going to add a custom attribute. So I'll just add in three spaces here for my data attributes. So I need to go with a data style of, let's say, maybe let's go with a zoom in. So data hyphen cell and press tab, and then you can go zoom hyphen in. Then we need data cell duration. And this duration can be maybe, let's go with something crazy like 900. Then we can do data cell delay. And the previous box I believe was 400 milliseconds, yes. So let's go ahead and set this one to maybe 600 just to be consistent, increments of 200. And then with our data sal easing, we need to go ahead and choose an easing from here. So let's do something crazy like ease in elastic. So I'll just simply copy this. I can pop that into my page here. Then I can simply publish this and let's go take a look at that on the front end. So everything else is still the same. And then we have that pop in effect as you saw right there. So overall, this is extremely easy. Everything that you need in terms of code and links is in the link in the description below to the blog post on my website. And now what I wanna do is go ahead and test this on the front end. So what I'm going to do is with WP Codebox, I'm simply going to disable the CSS and the JS. And now I'm going to take this and we'll go to Page Speed Insights or web.dev, whatever it's called these days. And we'll just simply analyze this. So again, this Cloudway server is just a one gigabyte. There's been no optimization done, but we're just really focused on what's the difference with this code on and off. So for having done absolutely nothing to this site, not bad on mobile, it's a 73. And then our desktop is a 97 right out of the gate. So hashtag generate press on that one. So then let's go ahead and turn these back on. So we will enable these codes and let's just make sure we're gonna refresh on the front end and make sure that the animations are working. And I expect to see pretty much nothing in terms of difference. So mobile is 73 and desktop was 97. Wow, so Chrome just completely crashed, but while this is running, I just wanted to make sure that you can see these animations are currently enabled. And there we go, mobile is exactly the same score, 73. And then desktop is still 97. So it's gonna crash again now, look at this. For some reason, I don't know what's going wrong here. It must just be something on my end. But you can see that the performance difference is nil. So just to recap, all that we've done is add these two code snippets. We added the CSS and the JS. And then in the back end of our site, all we need to do is modify our data attributes, which are these HTML elements. So again, if you're using Generate Blocks Pro, you can do this. Bricks should be able to do it. Oxygen can do it. There's tons of different builders out there that have the ability to edit your HTML attributes. And if that's the case, then you can absolutely take advantage of what we've done in this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed this. This is a handy little thing to breathe some life into your page, really simple to implement. And I hope you're able to find a use case for this in your workflow. Drop in the comments what you think. I look forward to hearing from you. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a future video.